Hello, everyone. Uh, am I audible, right? Okay. So uh, here I'm talking about uh, Python for uh, cloud services and infrastructure. Uh, uh, let me tell you something about myself. Uh, I'm Bomic. I came from India. Uh, I have around five years of uh, development experience. Uh, I'm a open source savvy guy. Uh, I love Python. I do some DevOps and uh, site reliability things, but my core will be the cloud. So uh, let me tell you my current product and a uh, little bit about it. So we have uh, developed a smartphone case uh, which can read your body vital when you place finger on the case like this. And uh, it will read your BP, ECG, heart rate, skin temperature, SpO2. And uh, it will show those things on your mobile and sync it with the cloud. So I worked on the cloud part. Uh, yeah, so this talk is all about uh, cloud and uh, the internal components. Uh, so yeah, to build any web application or any cloud services, uh, we have these questions first, like from where to start, which tools we can use, uh, how to integrate stuff, and uh, things needs to be taken care of. So from this presentation, you will get all these answers maybe. So yeah. So I'll let you know the Python friendly stack that I have been using since three plus years, and which is very reliable. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, any application, any web application or any cloud service will have this kind of stake, uh, uh, this kind of uh, set of components you need to prepare, where uh, there will be some web framework, WSGS server, task queue, database, login, caching, and many other things. Yeah. Uh, we also need to take care about uh, other components uh, like this. So we'll discuss all these things later on. Uh, so start with where to start. Uh, the first thing will be the web framework. Let's finalize the first web framework. What kind of uh, web framework we are going to use. Uh, when it comes to the Python, we have uh, two famous framework available which is Django and Flask. Uh, Django is like fully armed and uh, you no know, uh, fully included things inside Django. Uh, but Flask, well, it's a kind of a small framework uh, which is very extensible. So you can uh, attach other things uh, with this Flask. So these two are most famous. I always prefer Django because it has a few things included like authentication is there, so you don't need to worry about all of the things. Yeah, so uh, how to run web, uh, our web application? So we need WSGS server, WSGI server, okay? So uh, what kind of WSGI server we need? Uh, it basically gets the, uh, what WSGI server does, it gets the data from the upper layer and uh, process the data inside the process and uh, generate one output, which can be a response and send it back to the request, if it is a request response thing. So uh, we have uh, two uh, good WSGI server available uh, in Python. Uh, these two are most uh, 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 famous. So uh, one is G Unicorn and one is uh, Micro Whiskey or U Whiskey. Uh, I generally prefer U Whiskey because it has uh, uh, much more configuration power. Uh, there is no specific reason to 
uh, you can choose any of them. So yeah, uh, we should have some WSG server. Uh, next question will be uh, database. So what kind of database we are, uh, we need? I mean, either it's a SQL database or no SQL database. It's based on our use case. So uh, if we have some data elements uh, which we need to be relational, so we need some, uh, some sort of uh, SQL database, SQL database. Uh, so these are a few databases that we can go for. Uh, PostgreSQL is there, MySQL is there, and MongoDB for NoSQL. So uh, currently in that product, in that cloud, uh, we use MongoDB uh, for the 90% of the transactions. Uh, so no SQL you can use for uh, if you have uh, some unstructured data. So yeah, uh, that's the thing. Next is uh, web server. So any client, any requests uh, will not directly communicate to the DVSG server. It will pass through the web server. So web server will take care of all uh, the requests. It handled it and uh, pass it to the WSG server. WSG server will process it and this return back the response. So this is the general uh, architecture we need to figure out. Uh, these two are uh, most uh, in use frame uh, web server. Uh, actually these two takes 50% of internet traffic right now combinedly. So yeah, uh, either you can go for Apache or you can go for Nginx. Uh, Nginx mostly known for uh, speed and Apache uh, mostly has uh, some configuration power. So based on your use cases, uh, you need to define your uh, web server. Yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, next is the task queue. So uh, when you want to uh, perform some ad hoc tasks like uh, on some request, like if you are creating one account, one create account request comes and you want to generate some newsletter or some email things or that can be done uh, in a distributed way. So uh, you should have a task queue which can perform all these things. So if you uh, write your task queue, it's good, but uh, we should not write our own task queue uh, because all, it's already there, which can solve few problems like queuing, uh, like a retry mechanism. For example, there is one task came to send one email. Uh, to a customer uh, which has been, uh, which just registered uh, himself on our website. So if there is something failure happen, uh, we should have some mechanism to retry that. So that is one, some timeout, some scheduling, or some status of the task, maybe. So that can be uh, solved by some existing task queues. Uh, salary is most famous there. Uh, Redis queue is there. I always prefer salary because it has a good dashboard as well. And uh, it has a good monitoring uh, of tasks. So yeah, you can go for salary. So next is uh, logging. So Logging can be uh, event-based or uh, uh, the full logging feature could be, uh, you, you can log everything or some specific. So uh, I always prefer Sentry over there because uh, Sentry has uh, uh, a good logging power as well, plus it provides one good dashboard where you can uh, search your data uh, event-based data, and all the events you can monitor it from it. Uh, it also provides notification. Uh, when you configure your event, like if any error occurs, you should get one email. So 
So that can be uh, done by the sentry. Uh, CloudWatch is another option. Uh, so you can go for it. Yeah, uh, you also need to take care about other components, as I said, like source control. It's a must thing. I think uh, everybody does this. So yeah, uh, specific version, if I want to check out uh, some specific version, so source control will do it, all things. Uh, it also brought good history and accountability, remote, remote accessibility. So yeah, uh, these two are most famous uh, source control system. One is Git and uh, SVN. Uh, we use Git there. So uh, deployment and comp configurations. So these two are most uh, important thing uh, out of uh, after the development when uh, you want to check out your repository in the cloud and remotely access the server and uh, execute some SSH, execute some commands through SSH, or maybe. Uh, that can be done. So few uh, things are there, like uh, Fabric we use. It has a good SSH-based uh, remotely accessibility, and Ansible Chef Puppet can be used for uh, configurations management. Uh, and deployment could be uh, automated, not manually, like we should not do that. So Jenkins is there. Jenkins will do all the automatic deployment initiation. Uh, after getting deployed all the things, uh, we should have keep our eyes on uh, uh, process and system and activities. So uh, we need to monitor system, uh, like uh, how many nodes are there in our server system and cloud. Uh, each servers has their health and uh, we need to monitor all those things. For that purpose, we use uh, Negios. Negios provide a, a very good uh, monitoring uh, platform where uh, we can monitor all the system as well as processes. When I say processes, it means there is there can be uh, UWS SDA processes, I mean UVSG processes, or uh, Nginx is there, so we can monitor Nginx from the Negios or uh, MongoDB server is running well or not. So that can be monitored through uh, Nagios. Uh, Sentry is a kind of monitoring service where uh, we always monitor our uh, logs. If any error occurred, if any unusual thing happened, then we can uh, directly be notified by uh, any email. So Sentry is a good kind of uh, uh, monitoring service there. It's basically a logging system, but it provides some kind of monitoring. Uh, supervisor is there, so uh, supervisor will do uh, and control your uh, processes. You can start, you can stop from that dashboard, so uh, you can allocate uh, something, uh, and you can configure by your use case. So supervisor is also there. <coughs> so yeah, uh, cache is uh, also one part of uh, or cloud where we need to have some cache mechanism based on our use case. If we are serving uh, static content on a website, then we should have uh, some front end cache. And if we are serving some uh, content, uh, not the static content, but some content which can be reusable or frequently asked, so uh, some caching mechanism we can implement by uh, Redis or memcached. Uh, we use Redis there, uh, so yeah. Messaging. So, in messaging, uh, I would like to share one uh, use case where messaging can help. Uh, maybe you have a uh, multiple app servers or multiple DB servers, or let's take an example of app servers. For example, three app servers are there. Uh, if one app server is doing some task and wants to notify others that I have done this task, now you can start. So at that time, messaging can be useful. We use RMQ, uh, RabbitMQ, many people say, uh, which provides some pub-sub mechanism, public and sub publisher and subscriber. 
where a subscriber can join uh, and subscribe to the server and it will be notified when any uh, if we publish something on the channel so yeah it can uh, uh, so it is the messaging that's it yeah virtual anyway so uh, i love this feature because uh, it provides one isolated uh, python environment in your system because uh, you can you can have uh, n number of uh, python environment in your system and you uh, if you are working on a different different project you always have a different different uh, dependencies so virtual envy will help there you can create one environment you can install the dependencies like i need uh, uh, some uh, dependency of version 1.0 and in another project you need some dependency of uh, 1.1 so uh, it will be isolated for each of uh, them so yeah it's really great uh, feature analytics yeah you always like to see your uh, uh, users data or how your users are using your website maybe your application your clients are using your things so analytics can be uh, done from uh, done by either you can use google analytics for the static page where javascript can you know send data to the cloud and it will show you on the dashboard or you can use internal analytics where uh, you can build your own dashboard so there are few uh, tools available like graphite is there statsd is there which can send the all the metrics to the cloud and graphite will you know uh, arrange it into the graph yeah few other things we need to uh, take care of is uh, scaling it depends on your use case what kind of uh, usage you have uh, you may have a, a database overload, so you can scale your database vertically or horizontally. Uh, you can have a performance-based scaling where you, you the, your system, your application, two number of applications are not <coughs> sufficient, so you can you may scale those uh, applications and servers. Uh, you should have a, you may have periodic backup of your data which can be done through uh, Jenkins and uh, Fabric Jobs or uh, that you need to figure out how you can do it. So, uh, and yeah, replication and periodic backups may provide uh, data reliability. So your data always be there if you have set up all those things there. And load balancing is there where, you know, uh, work, uh, through Nginx or through Apache, you can kind of a load, balance your load. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bomi.